What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at it again with another Copart walk around over here in Oklahoma City. I'm gonna jump right into this today, guys. Look, I don't have a lot of time and if they don't start today, they don't start. I brought my booster pack. I just don't have time to mess with. I'm gonna try my best to avoid hail cars. I am truthfully, I'm burned out on hail cars. I'm sure you guys are too. So let's jump into this. Let's see if we can find anything. Maybe look at some RVs, some trucks, who knows? We'll see what we can get into today. Let's jump into it. So as I'm looking around, I, immediately I, I see almost nothing but hail cars, man. And, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way it is. Now we do have this though. Uh, it's low miles. It's a 2018 GLC 300. Um, you know, unfortunately it, it took a pretty hard hit right to the pillar and the rocker here. Uh, I don't think, yeah, we can't open that door. But you can see that, maybe you can see they'd actually already cut the uh, outer skin of the pillar and the rocker out looks like you got damage over here too this one uh yeah we're not gonna get in it but damn it's not or it was nice i should say it was nice it could be fixed man it could be fixed if you got a little bit of welding skills which i don't but you know hell maybe you do let's see what this looks like in here oh wow uh some somebody tried to weld that what is this? That is all boogered up. Yeah, it looks like somebody was attempting to weld this. Is this Bondo? Oh my, no way, dude. I wonder if this is a uh, rejected repair. Because look at this. Look how thin the paint is here, right? But look how thick the Bondo is here. I don't know if you can see that, but... Damn it. I mean, guys, that is ridiculous. So somebody tried to fix this up, patch it, welded it in a very sloppy manner, and it put Bondo all over. I guarantee you that's a that's a rejected repair. Let me tell you something. A lot of people don't know about this, but you are allowed to, after your vehicle is repaired at the service department or at the shop that you take it to, you are allowed to take your vehicle for an inspection okay it's like a post repair inspection from an independent shop you can go somewhere else and have it independently inspected where they have uh boroscopes they will go through little holes and crevices throughout the body where the accident was and they will look for stuff just like that and if they find it that's unsafe that is exceptionally unsafe to be half-ass welding cars together like that, bondoing, especially the pillar, man. The pillar, this is a big part of your structural integrity here. This is one of the only things, along with a bar or two in the doors, protecting you in the event of a side impact. You can't rig that up, man. You can't rig that up. So I guarantee you, this went in for an inspection uh, after being repaired, and they found that and was like, nope, we're done. Now, why this door's still tore up in the rocker, I don't know. I don't know. But obviously, somebody had welded that and puttied it back together, and they got caught. And the repair was either rejected or the insurance company just said, after this, we're done. We're just done. I don't know. The insurance company may have come and done their own due diligence and, and, and saw that and was like, nope, nope, we're not doing it. We're finished. That is shady right there, guys. That is shady. If you can think of a reason why somebody would have welded that up and put Bondo on it and painted it, please drop your comments below and let me know. So as we start walking around, you know, I start looking at it is hail, 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 hail. Ha awful hail damage. Again, hail damage. There's got to be something out here that's not got hail. And a Chevy Cruze hail damage. Volkswagen hail damaged. A Honda Accord that took a light bump in the front. I'm not really interested in the Honda Accord. Ouch. All right. How you doing? Yeah, another Honda Accord. This one took a little more than a light bump in the front. That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty nasty hit. We're finally getting into some wrecks, but I don't want these. Oh, wow. I'm not really looking for these major wrecks. I'm looking for something relatively easy and cheap these are getting harder and harder to find anymore guys i'm telling you damn that's that sucks that was a hard hit in the rear oh this is nice an acadia i mean i'm not into i'm not into the uh hail of course of course hail damage what do we got here we got a little nissan with a light hit in the front with is it 91,000 miles that's not too bad no bags blown 
Okay, this is what, an Ultima? It's a Sentra. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Nissan cars, they're big. Even the small cars are pretty dang big. I'm really impressed with Nissan. Ever since that Ultima that I got uh, several months ago, I think it was a 2012 Ultima, I have been, I've just kind of been in love with them. They're great cars. They're very roomy. I can't believe this is a Sentra. Um, I guess I should have known. It's not wide enough to be an Ultima, but just at first glance, I really thought this was an Ultima. It's a roomy little car. Okay, now once you see the inside, it's like it is kind of small. But for being a, a, an, econ an econo box car, this actually isn't too bad at all. This isn't too bad, and the damage doesn't look that bad either. I guess it could be. I bet we're not going to... Oh, we can get the hood open. Okay. Guys, the damage does not look that bad. I mean, of course, the core support is done. It's no big deal. It bolts on right here. And it bolts on right here. So this part needs to be replaced. The radiator condenser look like they maybe are. This could be a very easy repair, guys. Very easy repair. Yeah. I like this one. I like this one a lot. You throw a hood, a bumper, a headlight, a grill, and that upper core support. Hold on, let's see if the fender's got... Yeah, we're a little out of adjustment here. There's a pretty gnarly gap right there. But the door still opens fine. You could adjust that in. Let's check the other side. Actually, we've got the same gap on the other side. Yeah, there may be there may be a little more to this one. We'll go ahead and fire it up real quick. It's a 16. The miles are very low for a Nissan. Let me guess. Is it not, is it not gonna start? Come on, please. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. The key doesn't work it. What? What is the deal here? There we go. Oh, she started right up. She started right up. Time to find out if the air conditioning works. I don't see a low coolant light. Yeah, I'm thinking the, uh, the radiator's good. The condenser's probably good. We've got no blown bags at all. Nice on the inside. Looks like Pet Boys has been changing the oil with Synthetic 020. If this AC comes back to life... Right into gear. Now, I know these things are probably uh, CVT. In fact, I guarantee you they're CVT, and I'm not a fan of those, but that's just kind of the way it is. Yeah, the AC just got cold. Sure did. Important window works. I wasn't trying to do the windshield wipers, but now we know the windshield wipers work too. The key fob works. Yeah, this is one to put on the list, guys, for sure. This is an easy fix. This is a cheap repair. Parts of this car are not going to be very expensive. It needs a hood, a bumper, and a headlight. Uh, and hopefully you can get the bumper loaded with the grills and everything. And if we can find it in the same color, which I'll bet we can, you can put this car right back together, send it for a detail, get it nice and polished. You got yourself a nice looking car, man. It's got decent tires. I'll bet this thing runs and drives great. Now, right behind it is a Nissan Altima that looks very similar to the one I had. What year is this? It's a 2010, so it's the same uh, same body style, 112,000 miles. Looks like this one took a hit in the back. How bad is it? Honestly, it's not that bad either. It's not that bad either. Someone used a, a wire here to close it. See, look, if I was going to keep it for myself, I don't recommend you half-ass cars that you're trying to flip or sell, okay? Don't do that. Don't screw somebody over like that. But if it's just for you, if it's just for you and your, and, and your family, right, and you just need something cheap and reliable it's going to get you around, man, this could be it. You go to Harbor Freight, and you get you a port of power, right? This, uh, this pan right here is bent in. You get you a port of power and you push it back out as best you can to line everything up. You'll need a new trunk lid. 
Okay, the trunk lid's pushed in. Let's go get you another trunk lid from your local pull apart, LKQ, whatever. Trunk lid, port of power, push it out, put a bumper, a light, and a trunk lid on it. Down the road you go, man. Down the road you go. You could make this into a very nice, cheap, economical daily driver. Let's take a look at the interior. Leather, very nice. It's probably gonna be the four cylinder. Let's see if it'll fire up. Another another easy one, man. Another easy one. Dang it. All right. Yep, it shows 112,000 miles. Let's turn the radio off. Turn on the AC. Make sure AC is important, guys. A lot of you seem to think the AC is not that important. Trust me, the AC is very important here. Now, I wouldn't buy this car um, because I'm just going to send it to auction when I'm done with it and sell it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't half-ass a car like that, you know, and then put it on the market for some unsuspecting buyer to purchase. I can't do that. Yeah, AC is ice cold. It does sound like a does sound like a four banger put it in gear all right into gear right into gear important window works you see how we're zipping right through them here today guys i ain't messing around man i ain't messing around i want to knock this out yeah it's a four banger yeah, I'd be more interested if it was the six, but like I said, guys, for me, this would not be one for me because I'm not gonna put something like this back on the market using a port of power to push out the back. The proper way to do it would be to replace everything back there. And you know, that gets expensive and I don't have any welding skills. So for me, this car is out, but for you, this could be a great deal on a car right here. What the hell is this? It's a Toyota, that's about all I know. I have no idea. It's a hail car, so I'm not interested in it. It's a this is a 15 RAV4. Okay, it's got a weird looking front end. We got another Honda with hail damage. Ooh, I, this is interesting. A Malibu that's full of water, but again, hail damage. But how did it get water inside of it? I mean, this thing is destroyed with hail. 47,000 miles. That's, ooh, 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 no sir, no sir. I got a spider web on me. We got a Hyundai Santa Fe. Hail damaged? No? Eh, she took a pretty good crunch in the front, though. Yeah, I'm not really interested in the Santa Fe either. What else we got, man? Let's keep going down the row here. See if we can find any. Ooh. Okay. Damn. That was, that was a nasty wreck. That was a nasty wreck right there. Wow, okay, here we got a Toyota. It's obviously hitting the back. Not really interested in that either. Here we got a Cadillac, eh, it's hail damage. Not interested in that. A Jeep that's hail damage, not interested in that. Come on, man. Not interested in the Jeep either. We got lots of hail, guys. Lots of hail out here today. We got a Dodge Dart, not interested in that. Hail damage Chevy Cruze. How about a big nope, hail damage Kia? Nope. Another hail damage Kia. All right, guys. Let me uh, let me do some of this walking around for you guys. We'll come back if we find something. Ouch! Wow. What the hell did this used to be? Ooh. Wow. An Elantra. An Elantra. Man, looks like it slid on its side. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a Sonata. Boy, I'm just, I'm off today. Uh, <laughs> I got to get back to these Copart walk-arounds, man. Apparently, I done lost it. All right, let me see if I can find anything else out here that you guys might like. Well, how about a damn Navigator, man? I found a Navigator. Is it hail? It's hail. It's <laughs> uh, Yeah, she's hail damaged. Windshield's busted. The roof is all tore up. It's an 07 with 199,000 miles on the odometer. Ooh, look at them running boards. That's fancy. That's real fancy. Oh, it's got a trailer brake, so somebody was towing with it. Uh, 
Well, she runs. It goes into gear, forward and backward. Yes, sir. Let's give it a little gas. That don't sound good. That don't sound good at all. The wood is all broken and cracked. Look, THX certified. Ooh, baby. Yeah, I'll tell you something. I'm not interested in this one at all. All right, I know I said no more hail cars, man, but this is not just a Ford Taurus. This is the SHO, man, and yeah, it's severely hail damaged, but damn it, it's a twin turbo Taurus SHO, man. It's a 2015 with 66,000 miles on the odometer. Look at this bad boy. I've always wanted one of these shows. I know better though, I know better. Damn, it's clean though, on the inside. The outside, not so much, but on the inside, she's pretty nice, man. She's got the spoiler. It's got that Eco Beast under the hood. Let's go ahead and fire this one up. Oh yeah. Have you driven a Ford lately? Uh, can we turn that down? Here we go. All right. Yeah, this is nice. This is this is real nice, man. I like this. A little too quiet. Just a little bit too quiet. Let's take a look under the hood at the EcoBoost motor. Well, well, it would be helpful if I could find the dadgum hood release, wouldn't it? Uh. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is it right here. Man, this car is a beast, dude. It's all stock. Everything's stock under the hood. These things are capable of so much more power with some minor bolt-ons and a tune. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, guys. What do you what do you think? Comment right now on the show, man. I'm 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 interested in it. The tires eh, they're okay. They're okay. Hail damage all down this side, all down the roof, the trunk. I mean, this thing is just tore up, man. Uh, this side is all right as usual. You guys know how it goes. This side is all right, but the entire hood, the entire roof, the windshield, I don't know. It, it, it needs a lot. If you're going to try to bring it back to like reasonable cosmetic condition, this is going to need a lot of work. I don't think I'm interested in doing all that. All right, all right. Let's move over to trucks, see if we can find anything worth looking at over here. Oh, I see some nasty wrecks, though. I'll tell you what. Some of the worst trucks, some of the worst accidents, I should say. Some of the worst accidents I find out here are in the pickup trucks. Everybody thinks that these big trucks are just so safe. And, and I guess, I guess they feel that way. But, I mean, I'm here to tell you, boy, some of the worst wrecks I ever see out here are in the pickup truck section. You'll see in just a minute, like this is just one. I mean, of course he probably got clipped in the rear by a, I don't know, a semi truck or a damn train. But you know, uh, here's an F-250 Lariat Super Duty. Well, she didn't take that much damage, not too bad. You got your power, cho uh, power stroke, sorry, sorry. Hey, let me tell you something, guys. Here's another power choke, stroke, another power stroke. I'm just fooling with you. Don't get mad, don't get your feelings hurt, man. You can, some of you guys are too damn sensitive, too damn sensitive. I'm gonna tell you one thing though, all right? And it's something I've learned recently. I personally, oh, is this Weston's? Is this Weston's, Weston GW's truck right here? Yeah, you know, take a look around. Look at all these power, power strokes, all right? 
another power st stroke man it's hard to say power stroke i always want to say power choke but you see a lot of these out here there you got a couple rams there ain't many of them i wonder why that is but look here's one right here to prove my point i would rather be coming than stroking you know what i mean <laughs> uh just just a little fun humor there guys i'm not serious i'm not serious you guys know i, I had a power stroke the old school 7.3 i loved it had a billion miles on it the damn thing ran and drove all the way to indiana and back hauling uh a van hauling a van for my uncle i wonder if this thing will run oh it's a non-runner never mind well it's got power or does it no it doesn't she's dead as a door now i told you i'm not gonna bother jump starting this stuff today i'm not that's a nice truck though lots of hail this should run i guarantee you this runs it says it's a non-runner i guarantee you if this is a total loss from hail damage this is a runner guys this is a runner i think this one's just uh i think this one's mislabeled i don't know where the damn hood release is neither oh there it is there it is uh, let's see if she got any come on now she got any goodies under Ooh, boy okay wow this thing was road hard and put away wet yeah i'd pass on this one man um she's rough she's real rough uh yeah I'd pass on this. The main reason I will not touch these dadgum Fords, pretty much any of them anymore, is because you got to remove the cab to do any major work on the engine. And to me, that's ridiculous. And I know a lot of people say, it's easy to remove the cab. Bullshit. <laughs> Excuse me. But I call bull. I call BS on that, all right? It is not easy removing the cab off of the frame, okay? But, I mean, if you've done it enough times, I, yeah, sure, I guess. But no thank you. No thank you. I, I don't want a truck that I've got to take the cab off just to work on the engine. Damn, a Denali HD wow wow that's uh yeah that's rough that's rough right there looks like everybody inside was all right though well you got to give the old truck credit man it took a hard hit that was a real hard hit let's see what else we got over here of course we got the rams i'm not gonna sit here and brag on the rams too much oh uh, here's another power stroke hey i got it right that time i got it right that time this, this is decent looks like someone stole the bumper off well frame's bent you can clearly see the frame is bent pretty good right there this wouldn't be too bad drive shaft not connected that's important to remember if you're going to try to drive it out of here drive shaft not connected Big boy Ram 3500 dually with the with the flatbed on it. You got the big frame wrecker bumper on the front. It looks like something fell on top of it. 144,000 miles, not bad at all. Drive shaft's disconnected. The drive shaft's always disconnected. Hell, this bed is heavy. I, but let me tell you something. This bed had to a, add a, add a ton of weight to this thing, man. That's a huge bed. Huge bed. Uh, wow let's take a look at the inside see what 144,000 miles look like on this bad boy oh wow no way that's 144,000 it is oh and the steering there might be something wrong with the steering <laughs> i'm not even gonna bother trying to start this one up oh this poor truck 144,000 miles that that thing that had a <laughs> had a rough life man that had a rough life uh king ranch fx4 over here another super duty over here this one took a nasty hit smells like something burnt over here i can smell oh there it is i knew i smelt burnt Ooh. yeah is that a there's some carnage for you today guys we got one over here that definitely caught fire oh a cab fire what do you think uh stereo wiring gone oh well <laughs> I can tell you what the fire was. Look at 
it's these people adding light bars and stupid crap to their vehicles, man. And then they run the wires like this. They, they tape them up in some weird, like, come on, man. Look, look at this. And you run them through the door where things are opening and closing. Metal are opening and closing. Then you run them under the hood where there's, again, pinch points. Metal opening and closing all the time. Then you wonder why your damn cars catch on fire. Look, if you don't know how to properly install something, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it, man. That's dumb. That is dumb. I'm going to guess this is a... <laughs> I'm going to guess that's a hail car right there. <laughs> an F-350 Lariat Super Duty. Oh, man. I like this dually right here. I like this. I am kind of partial to Dodge. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But let me tell you. Let's, you know, let's screw the Dodge. Let's jump off the Dodge for a minute. I like this. I can't lie. Like, this is clean. All right, it's an F-250, of course, power stroke. This is nice. I really do like this. Now, she's got some definite front-end damage. I'm going to guess frame damage and some major suspension damage as well. I'd almost put money on it. Frame may be okay. I'm not seeing any frame damage, but definitely front axle damage. I can guarantee that. This thing is pushed way too far in, bent back. So, you know, a little bit of work on the front end there bumper fender but this is nice i like this but i'll tell you right now why i will never buy a, a ford and i know i know it's the number one selling pickup truck well guys i'm a big fan of watch jargo sorry watch jargo i'm not trying to make fun of your truck man i'm not but i've been following him and that truck for a while now <laughs> All right. Ever since he bought it, I was like, wow, that's a nice truck. And it is. It's a real nice truck. I've ridden in it. He, it's a beautiful truck, man. Very nice. But then I see all these videos where the damn thing keeps breaking down on him, and it's always in the shop for this or that, problem after problem. And I'm just like, what's he got on that thing? 50,000 miles? 50,000 miles? No, sir. No, sir. I'm not spending this kind of money on a truck. I wonder if it's dead. Let's find out. Yeah, it's dead. I am not spending that kind of cash on a truck to have it breaking down on me at 50,000 miles and constantly sitting in a shop getting worked on, only to be given back to me still broken and told that it's normal. No, sir. No, thank you. And for that reason, I pass on a Ford. You know why I bought a Ram? I bought a Ram because of Weston Champlin, man. I did. He convinced me that these Rams, these Cummins, these uh, turbo diesels were the way to go. And, you know, I was happy with the last Ram I had, the 2019 2500. I put 43, 45,000 miles on that with no trouble at all in a year. In one year, I had no issues, no problems. It never had to go to the service department for anything other than oil change and fuel filters. So for that reason, I'm going to stick with my Rams. And I buy my vehicles brand new. Maybe it's a waste of money. I don't know, but for me, I buy my vehicles brand new, so I don't have to deal with it, man. I know I got the warranty. I don't have anything to worry about. If something does go wrong, it's all covered, and I'm not screwing with it, man. And there's also the lemon law, so if something goes, the same thing goes wrong three times, you can send it back and uh, make the company buy it back, just like, uh, but similar to what happened with the Corvette, almost happened with the Corvette. So, yeah, I'm kind of a Ram fan now, man. And hey, for that Ram, I ended up making money on the deal. I traded it in and got more for it than I paid for it after I put 43,000 miles on it and drove it for a year. Can't beat that. I guess now we'll take a look at some travel trailers before we get out of here. These are all hail damaged. Everything is hail damaged. Everything is hail damaged, man. Every single thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of these anyway. And then we'll get up out of here because uh, I'm actually... <laughs> Can I even climb up in here? Oh, wow. I'm actually on my way to the Dodge dealership right now to uh, see about trading in my Jeep, my 2020 Jeep on a 2019 uh, Hellcat SRT wide body red eye. Yeah, I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't do it, but it's $85,000. It's got 3,000 miles on it. And, I mean, again, it's a Challenger Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body, in case I didn't say the wide body part. Uh, and I'm actually really, 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 ugh, 
looking forward to going down there and test driving it and potentially trading in the uh, trading in the old less than a year old Jeep on that bad boy. That that one over there smelled funky, like funky, not funky fresh, like funky trailer trash. Okay, well, that's good to know. Again, hail damaged. Yeah, these hail, it doesn't take much, guys, to total these. These are very light aluminum, and hail destroys them. Uh, you'll end up with Swiss cheese on the roof. Before you know it, you got leaks everywhere. It's got bunk beds, you know, top and bottom bunk beds. You got a big bed over there. This isn't too bad. If I was to get a camper, which I probably wouldn't, let's see, yeah, hail damage right through there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these could probably be fixed. They could probably provide a few years of usable service. And if I was going to buy one, which I don't think I would, I would probably buy a pull behind, a bumper pull. I mean, probably not a gooseneck. I don't want to be riding around with something. Honestly, that's too big for me. And that's a, that's a, that's a bumper pull. But for me, that's huge. That's huge. I, I wouldn't want to be traveling around with something that big. For me, it's like, give me a tad bit of space, something small like this. It's got everything I need. It's not too big. Hell, you might even still be able to fit through a drive-thru. I've, I've got a car hauler bigger than that. So I would probably go with something cheap, small like this. You know, you can use it, take it where you need to go. It's easy to pull. The Ram would have no issue pulling that. I like that. I do like that one. A little coachman there. See what else we got. Another one looks like Swiss cheese, man. I mean, we got we got we got trailers for miles, man, and I'm not going through all these today. But oh, this is nice. Yeah, this is nice. Aside from the hail damage. Hell, if I look inside and I don't see any leaks, I don't care about the hail, man. I don't. If I don't see any staining on the roof, or the, the ceiling, I should say, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Looks like someone had their coffee here. You got your sink. You got a little breakfast bar here. That's decent sized bedding. That doesn't look very comfortable though. Like, you know what I mean? That doesn't look that doesn't look very comfortable. But you got a couple beds there. You got your bathroom, your shower, your sinks on the outside. You got your fridge and your freezer, your microwave, your stove, sinks. You got a couch. Well, I don't see a TV. Looks like you got central heat and air here. Very nice, very nice. It's just a little bit older model, I'd guess. The master bedroom, the master suite right here. Yeah, this isn't too bad, I like this. It's another fairly small one. This one though, is, is, is a little bigger than, than I would prefer, honestly. It's just me, man. It's just my fiance and I, we don't need anything. We don't need anything that big. That little one over there, honestly, that little clipper, that's perfect. Well guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch this video. I'm posting this today. Today's Friday. This video is going up Friday. So you're gonna see the video the very same day, which is that's a rarity. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get over to David Stanley Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram in Midwest City, man. I can't recommend those people enough. Caleb is over there waiting for me. I know he's excited to make this sale. I don't know if I'm gonna do it though. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I owe, I don't know, thirty five thousand dollars on the Jeep. And, and going from $35,000 on the Jeep to $85,000 on a Hellcat, I already had a Hellcat, man. And I know this is a wide body red eye, but I think the horsepower and everything's identical. It's, it's just some cosmetic differences. I don't know if I really want to spend $85,000 on, but I'm going to go over there. I'm going to take a look at it. And if he can sell me on it, then I'll buy it. Uh, if not, hell, I may buy something else. I've been thinking about getting a Z06 uh, C7, maybe. I don't know. I'm bored with the Jeep. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Look, if you enjoyed the content, hit that thumbs up button, man. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that stuff. Auto Auction Rebuilds. And until next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.